Hello world! So, if you're building toy box from source, let's assume you start with a fresh instance of the source. What you normally do is configure, make, make, install. In this case, that's going to be make def config, make to create a toy box binary. Each of those dots is compiling a single .c file. Uh, you can actually see what they are by doing capital V equals one on the command line, same as the Linux kernel. If I go make clean and then make V equals one, it will show me what it did. Notice that make clean did not delete the config. This is the same general logic as the Linux kernel. There is a make dist clean that will delete all the files that are not shipped with Toybox. Make clean just puts it back to a state where we're about to do a new build. So that gave us a Toybox binary and I can run it and it is dynamically linked if I go Toybox because I didn't tell it not to be dynamically linked. If I wanted it not to be dynamically linked I would go L, uh, make ld flags equals dash dash static, which is going to drive, you know, I didn't have to clean everything, I could have just uh, deleted the toy box binary, it's going, there's already one there, it didn't notice that the config flags had changed, but if I rebuild with ld fl flags plural, thank you, if I uh, build it with ld flags dash dash static, this will drive glibc nuts, because the GNU C library is deeply incompetent about a large number of things, and this is one of them. Another thing that will happen is that the Toybox binary will be absolutely enormous. If we get back to where I was with the dynamic binary, and let's fast forward a little bit, saving a little time through the miracle of editing software, the next thing to do is make install. Now, ordinarily you tell it a prefix to install to, and I'm just saying I didn't give it a prefix, so it will install in a directory called install, where it created all the symlinks that you would find in a normal system. If instead I go make install flat, it will put absolutely everything in one directory, which is often more useful when you're making embedded systems, but if you want one with the conventional file system layout, that's what make install does. You may notice that I combined several of these targets on the command line at the same time. What I normally do is make dist clean def config toy box tests install flat. So what that's going to do is that's going to delete everything that wasn't shipped, give me a default configuration, build a toy box binary, run the test suite against the toy box binary I just built, and if any of the default config for the test suite is if any of these files fail, if, if any of these tests fail, it will abort and not continue. It will stop with the failure. And then at the end, it's going to install everything into that install directory if it works. So I can tar uh, I can tar CZ F and let's do a v, czvf thing. So this gives me a tarball of the toy box install that I just created that I can extract into another system. I probably actually want to cd into the thing and do that instead so that it doesn't put everything into an install subdirectory if I'm moving everything over to a new system. Six of one, half dozen of the other, what you want to do. So you may have noticed there's a bunch of make targets. 
there is a target make help that shows you all of the make targets. These ones up here are your configuration options. I have been using def config, which gives you the default configuration. It basically switches on everything that's finished and expected to work pretty much everywhere. There's make all no config, which starts with everything switched off and lets you switch stuff on. Make menu config is the interactive configuration menu. Uh, this does require curses dev package to be installed in order to build this and use it. So I can cursor up and cursor down Enter will descend into a menu. Space will toggle the entry. I can cursor right and hit enter on help, which will show me the help text for this command. And for some of them, if I exit and then go to Toybox global settings, these aren't commands. So the help explains, well, what does this option do? You know, things like that. This command grouping mirrors the directory layout. It's actually generated from that directory layout. There's the set of POSIX commands. Uh, I can also page up and page down. There's the set of pending unfinished commands. These are not enabled by default. These are disabled by default, and you have to go in here and switch them on if you want to play with them, or build all yes config, but that's going to switch on stuff in here that probably isn't necessarily there on your system. It's like, use this library, well do I have that library installed? There are networking commands. There are commands out of the old Linux standard base. There are other commands which are, basically I didn't have a category for these. There's usually a man page for them, but not necessarily a standard. I have example commands, which again are not switched on by def config. These are commands meant to be, meant to have their source code examined, or in the case of the demo commands, these are commands that, that the test suite uses to look at library infrastructure in a way that's not specific to a command. And then these are Android specific commands. Since I'm not building with a Bionic toolchain, I don't actually have the prerequisites for them to be enabled. So those only show up when you're building for Android. I can build with a Bionic toolchain. I have a little wrapper script that sets the environment variable cross compile to this big long path of a copy of the Android NDK I have downloaded and lightly modified as described in the FAQ. And if I go llwrap make dist clean def config toybox, that will build against Bionic. You'll notice it's setting ld flags equals static in addition to setting cross-compile, because I don't have Bionic installed on my host, so I wouldn't be able to run the binary that I build without it being statically linked. But now I have a binary linked against Bionic, and if I go make menu config, now it shows me a couple of the Android commands. I'm, I still don't have all the prerequisites. There are six or seven of these. But it saved the fact that I was building against Bionic in the config file. All these configuration things create a file .config, which has a bunch of symbols. Disabling a symbol means commenting it out with this is not set. Enabling a symbol means setting it to Y. This is copied from the Linux kernel infrastructure. We're only using a subset of the full range of what the Linux kernel infrastructure has. But basically, when I've switched a symbol on, it's equal to Y. When I've switched a symbol off, it's commented out like this. Note that this is not actually a comment. It looks like a comment, and other lines that start with a with a pound sign are a comment, but this special symbol name is not set with that spacing. 
is parsed by the Linux kernel config infrastructure for historical reasons that are sad, and that is a video of its own. Let's just not go there right now. So these are the help options. There are default configurations for Mac OS X, for FreeBSD, and for Android, which are sets of commands known to work in this environment, or in the case of Android, that they have chosen to use. You can specify Toybox as your build target. You'll note that when I did my make dist clean def config Toybox tests install, I was explicitly specifying Toybox. If I don't specify what to build, Toybox is the default. I can also build individual commands. I can go make sed, and it will build. Well, OK, I can't do that if uh, switching, switching tool chains without doing a make clean leaves it in a kind of awkward state. But said dash dash help, it goes, yes, this is the sed command. And it made a standalone statically linked sed, which is enormous because Bionic doesn't really focus a lot on optimizing static linking either. Uh, if I build it against muscle libc, cross compile equals, I have a, let's say, arm v5. Sound about right? Yeah. And cross. LD flags equals dash dash static make dist clean def config. An interesting thing about this is if I do dist clean and then I tell it make sed, it doesn't know what sed is. I have to do def config or one of the other configuration commands for it to populate the generated directory and more specifically populate the file single make which are generated by that config in order for it to know what make said looks like. But now that I have done that, the said is 115k instead of as big. And that still seems kind of big, but OK. Just as I can put multiple other kinds of make targets on the same command line. I can go make cat ls sed test and so on and make multiple individual standalone commands on the command line. If I want a list, I can make list of available commands. There is also a make list pending, I believe it's called, which are the things in pending, they're not listed here. These are the ones, make list is what shows up in def config, make list pending. Uh, make list may actually be what's selected. Let me actually, all no config. I don't remember what I did. Make list. Nope, nope, it's what's available. Make def config. There is even In make help, there is, there's list and list pending. There is a make change, which I didn't know what to call it. It's basically like change for a 20. It builds every standalone command it knows how to build, one after the other, just goes through the whole list. I'm not going to wait for it. But in the change subdirectory, it built a bunch and it said, well, left square bracket didn't build because that's an alias for test that's a little awkward and I interrupted count so that one didn't finish building and uh, I think it gives you the log in that case no it doesn't oh it just it just touched the file beyond that I can go into the tests a little more. Make root and make run root are the make root plumbing. That's its own video. 
There's make install and install flat. There are also an uninstall and an uninstall flat that don't get used much, but in theory, if you did install them to a destination, well, this can delete them out of there again. That's if you're building on a system that doesn't have a package management system and you're just building everything from source and you want to clean up after yourself. There is a make install airlock, which is related to make root and make run root. We'll get to that in another video. Clean and dist clean, I mentioned. Uh, there is make test individual command. So if I make test sed, it will build a standalone version of sed and then run just the tests for sed. The test suite actually has a test host I can do, uh, which will test the host version of sed instead of the toy box version of sed. That's basically testing the test suite. I should, I should do something more in-depth on the test suite at some point. And I think what I haven't explained so far is make baseline and make bloat check, which are a little weird, but uh, if I go make dist clean, make all no config, make menu config, and then let's say I switch on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these things. And then I do a make baseline. Make baseline says I want to see what the difference is between a starting version of the command and a later version of the command. So if I make menu config again and then switch on Unicode, make bloat check. This builds the new one and then tells me what new ELF symbols showed up and how, or, or went away, and how bigger or smaller are they. So that new command I added, added 748 bytes to the toy box binary. I could have applied a patch, I could have changed the config, I could have gone in and made manual edits. Whatever the changes were between baseline and bloat check, this gives me visibility into them. And that's pretty much all the make help options that we need. There's a little bit at the bottom about, you know, how to cross compile, which is out of date. Remind me to fix that.